How much silver and gold should you own right now? Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching Yankee Stacking. How much silver and gold should you own? I get this question all the time. And some people answer it with a, you know, just one more ounce, Yankee, just one more ounce. <laughs> My stacking journey never ends, dude. <laughs> I get the passion and the excitement that comes from stacking this stuff. But I do think you can be over allocated with silver and gold. Yeah, I, I think you can have too much of this stuff. Now, before you just click away, hear me out. The question, how much silver and gold should you own right now is not a simple one to answer. There is no one size fits all when it comes to investing and buying any asset, right? It actually depends on several factors. I'm gonna share six of those factors in the form of questions later on in this video. Also, I'll give you my rule of thumb for a good precious metals target. How much silver and gold I think you should own right now? Or at the very least, be striving to get soon if you're a new stacker. And at the very end, I'm gonna give you a really cool tip from an expert precious metals trader, Makaram Majud, Chief Investment Officer of Blackstone Commodity Group. You know, even as a prepper stacker, I don't put all my financial investments into silver and gold. I don't. You know, I, I primarily see this stuff as a great way to preserve your wealth not necessarily grow your wealth. Although, you know, with some silver and gold asset classes, you can do just that. No, physical precious metals are more of an insurance policy to me, more than a, you know, a traditional investment. And, you know, most financial advisors only advocate maybe five to 10% uh, of silver and gold in your portfolio, if they even consider it at all. I think most financial advisors are clueless to the merits of precious metals, and they focus more on stocks and bonds as a way to grow and preserve your wealth. It's the classic 60-40 rule, right? 60% stock, 40% bonds. Why? Why do they do that? Well, one reason is because that's how they get their commission. They get a cut when you buy and sell stocks and bonds. So most financial advisors focus there. Speaking of professional financial advisors. I'm not one, okay? I do regularly coach my Yankee Cannon members on their stacking and their uh, mix of precious metals within their own portfolios, but you need to do your own research, make your own decisions. That said, in my coaching, what I most often see is the classic stacking mentality. Dare I say obsession with silver? and to a smaller degree, gold. One of my members said to me, Yankee, all I want to do is buy silver and gold and shove it in my vault. That's it. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> he was adamant. He didn't trust anything else. And his Edward Jones advisor thought he was off his rocker. I didn't. I understood his mindset, but I helped him soften his opinion. You see, while gold, silver, and other precious metals may provide added peace of mind, and that's what this gentleman was after, it also comes with an opportunity cost. Balance is key here, diversification. And, and this is coming from a prepper stacker, okay? One who really sees the scenarios of stagflation and hyperinflation, a currency collapse, we can't know for sure when and how severe that collapse is going to be. It is possible that my precious metal insurance is going to come into play after an SHTF scenario. But each of us should ask how much investment capital we are willing to give up for this peace of mind. And here are the six questions that I think we need to ask ourselves. The first one is, am I well diversified? Or could my portfolio use more assets that are not tied to the stock or bond markets? Number two, how concerned are you about geopolitical risks? 
or our country's economy? <laughs> I sure am. Number three, what is my risk tolerance? Can I handle the volatility of precious metals, especially silver, and not sell at a loss? Very important to ask yourself that question. How important is it to have a regular stream of income from your portfolio? This actually is really important to me. Number five, how important is liquidity? Do you need to have cash handy at a moment's notice? And number six, it's related to that last one. What is my investment timeline? How much of a long-term view do you have with your precious metals? Now, I've answered those questions for myself and actually continue to, all right? As I grow older, where I'm at in my life, I ask those and reassess. And I've chosen to diversify across several asset classes in a very conservative way. And gold and silver continues to become a larger and larger part of that portfolio. They're not the only thing I buy, no, okay? I like uh, safer income generating investments too. And I even have a small amount in more speculative sectors. In fact, I'm gonna be doing a video soon showing my portfolio breakdown. And I'll show you my specific asset mix I currently have and what I'm shooting for by the end of this decade. In fact, why don't you take a moment right now and subscribe and hit the bell so you don't miss this upcoming video. All right, so here's my answer to how much silver you should own right now. And it's a quick and dirty answer. It's a, it's a rule of thumb, okay? Here it is. 400 ounces of silver and one ounce of gold. I think that's a great target to shoot for, especially for a beginner stacker. And it also happens to be my silver to gold buying ratio, 400 ounces of silver to one ounce of gold. Okay, so that's a rule of thumb, but I need to be careful here. That target also depends on the amount of investment capital you have to put towards precious metals. And that varies widely <laughs> for those watching this video. So what's the right mix? depending on that available capital. Well, for that, let me finish up this video by sharing what Mukaram Majud, CIO of Blackstone Commodity Group, said on my last Ask Yankee live stream to someone in the chat. Is there a rule of thumb, anything that you can help them for every this? If you've got an X amount of money, maybe you can give us a scenario where you have a certain amount of, uh, of money that you can invest here. What is a good ratio? Here's what I like at this point. Because first, this goes back to the point that we know that as gold gets going, there's going to come a time where silver will outperform gold. Mm -hmm. Okay. In the beginning, you saw how silver struggled between 16 and 16 and 19, 16 and 19, as gold was creating new monthly highs, not record highs, new monthly highs. Mm -hmm. Then gold broke out, silver went from 20 to 30 almost in like a month, right? Mm -hmm. Here's how I look at it. If you have $10,000 or less, you should have more silver than gold. Okay. If you have $10,000, uh -huh. and okay. I would put it this way, 60% silver, 40% gold. That's what you should do. Um, even if it's less than 25,000, I would still go more silver than gold. Really? Anything okay. over that amount, you know, when you come into, when you come into the 50,000 or higher, then I think you can get more equal in gold versus silver or, or go more, more gold and, and less silver percentage wise. But anything less uh -huh. than 25,000 or 10,000 have more silver than gold. That's what. 60 40 should be the um at least a good good rule of thumb there i like good that rule of thumb. excellent yeah. so he likes this 60 40 split with an almost exclusive focus on silver when you have ten thousand dollars or less and then he gets up to that 50 50 split right gold silver when you're at fifty thousand or more what do you think do you like that that uh, split that Mukarm says? Please leave a comment right down there in the comment section below. And also, take a quick moment to hit the thumbs up button. I always appreciate it when you do that. So thanks for watching, and as always, I hope your day is A-OK. -okay.